Hi everyone, I am Precious and in this video we are going to consider the integrals of the form uh, where the, you have a quotient and the numerator is a derivative of the denominator. And so we say that this is an offshoot of the previous video we did on integration by substitution where you have, we also call it the u substitution integration. And so where we have a function of functions and of course integrals of this form actually fall into that category however those of them who satisfy this condition are actually solved using this approach and it makes it a lot easier and of course you can see here i can choose to call this denominator my u and then use that approach of u substitution and i will get the integral and the same thing applies to this and of course, the same thing applies to all of this. Okay, so now that in this case, whenever you have an integral where you have a quotient, and then the, the numerator is a direct derivative of the denominator, you can easily just integrate and then you will get this. And what is it? It leads you to a logarithmic function. So it just gives you the natural log of the denominator function. So look at this, for instance, the derivative of x is 1. And so, of course, the integral of this is going to give you the natural log of x, which is the denominator. Of course, here you can see the derivative of this denominator is 2. And so it applies. So let's look at some examples. So the first example here says we should evaluate the integral. Uh, the integral 2 all over 2x plus 3. And of course, I already said that if you take the derivative of the denominator so whenever you're given a fractional uh, integral the first thing you should do is check the derivative of the denominator is it equal to your numerator and if it is not is there any more uh, can you moderate it in such a way that you can have some maybe constant coefficient and then the numerator will give you the derivative of the denominator if that happens then you just do that uh, permutation and then get your solution so look at what we're saying here of course straight away the derivative of the denominator here is equal to 2 and so that means our integral is simply the natural log of this denominator function and so we have plus our constant c and so and like i said earlier you can actually use u substitution here to get your solution let's check that if i say let my u be equal to 2x plus 3 of course, the implication is that if I differentiate u with respect to x, I am going to get 2. And so from here, it means that my dx is going to be du all over 2. And so if I now substitute that here, I am going to have the integral of 2 all over, of course, I've called this my u, and then my dx will now be du all over 2. Can we see that? And so from here now, you can see 2 will take away 2. So you will simply have the integral of 1 over u du. And by standard integral, I said that this is simply equal to the lean of u plus c. And of course, if you now bring back your u, which is, uh, of course, 2x plus 3. And so you are going to have the same solution as what we have here. Let's look at other examples. The next example is this. You can look at this carefully. Of course, the derivative of this is 2, which is not exactly equal to 3. But we can do something to this, and then we'll get something that will give us what we want. And what is it? I know that since I want 2 up here, so I can multiply the numerator by 2. And if I do that, to simply make sure that I did not change anything, I will simply divide the denominator by 2. And so by the time I cancel this numerator this 2 2 i will get back what i am giving so i have not really changed anything so what do i do then i will simply now factorize out this 3 all over 2 and if i do that i will now have a function that satisfies that condition and so here the numerator is simply the derivative of the denominator and at this point i can apply the rule and that gives me the lean or uh, that's the natural log of the denominator and of course you have your 3 over 2 outside here of course, you can choose to bring this 3 over 2 up here to become a power if you want, uh, because this is a logarithm and so it obeys the laws of logarithm. In any case, this is our solution for this. And so we have the next example. This one says that we should find the integral of tan x. 
tan x is equal to sine x over cos x. And of course, we know that if we take the integral of cos x, we are going to get minus sine x. Now, but of course, what we have in the numerator is not exactly minus sine x. So, but we know that we can permute this in such a way that we can get minus sine x. And what do we do? Of course, we know that minus times minus sine x is the same thing as sine x. So we have not changed anything. But we just wanted to have minus sine x as the numerator. And that has happened. And immediately, you have satisfied that condition. And so you can apply that rule. And so you get the minus log. Of course, you drop your minus. And then the whole of this turns to the natural log of cos x. And of course, you recall that the reason why we are using this absolute value is because we have a natural log function here. Because log reading function must be positive. And so you attach this uh, absolute value so that whatever you have here, it will always change it to positive. And so like what I said earlier, and actually bring up this negative sign up here. And when it comes, of course, you know that this is a uh, negative one here, if you want. And so when it comes up here, you just have uh, cos x raised to power minus 1, and then that is the same thing as the natural log of sec x plus t. And some people can actually leave their solution at this point. So we go to the next example. It says we should take this integral, 4x minus 8 all over this. So the very first thing you should always do is to differentiate your denominator. And so if we do that here, we are going to have 2x minus 4. And it is not exactly what we have here. But this is actually, the, the numerator can actually be simplified in such a way that it will contain 2x minus 4. And that's what we have here. And so when you do this, you simply bring out that 2 and then apply the rule. Because at this point, it satisfies that condition. And so our solution is 2 ln of x squared minus 4x plus 5, which is our denominator plus c. And we can choose to bring that 2 up as a power or we can leave it this way and that's our solution so the next example so here we have this and what do we do we can actually simplify because there is something common up and down and when you do that you bring out four so the four will cancel out and so you will have this and then you try by the de derivative of this is exactly equal to 3x squared because this will change to zero and so immediately your solution is a natural log of your denominator and so example 6, look at what we have here. The derivative of our denominator is simply 2x, okay? And what we have in the numerator is not 2x. So what do we do? We try to see if we can, you know, permute what we have in such a way that we can get this. And so the simple thing to do, first of all, attach 2 here. And when you attach 2 in the numerator, you have to do something. If not, you would have changed the function you are given. And that's why we decided to now multiply again by half. Of course, this half will cancel away these two and will still return back to what we are giving. So we have not changed anything. And then the next thing is to bring out our half. And so remember, the essence of this is so that you can get something that will satisfy the condition. And so you will now apply it. And immediately you have half the natural log of your denominator function. Okay. So the next example here says that we should take the integral of this. What do we do? And so we try to simplify it. It's very easy. Of course, the first thing is that this x can come up. And if it comes up, you're going to have this. And why did we do that? Because we know that the derivative of ln x is simply 1 all over x. And that immediately gives your solution as a natural log of the natural log of x. And that is plus our constant c. So this is our solution. We go to example 8. And then here we have the integral of e raised to the power 3x all over e raised to the power uh, 3x again minus 1. Okay, so if you take the, in, the, the derivative of this, you are going to get 3e raised to the power 3x. Of course, this is going to turn to 0. So and this is not exactly what we have here. So what do we do? So exactly what we did in the earlier example. So you multiply the numerator by 3. But because you want to balance all things, so you also divide by 3 again, which is this 1 all over 3. And so you bring out your 1 all over 3. And then, of course, this immediately satisfies the condition. And this becomes your solution to the problem. The next example. 
Example nine here says that we should integrate this. Okay, so when we differentiate this, we are going to get this numerator. And then the essence of this example also is to let us see that someone can actually cancel out exponential 5x with the denominator here, and you just have the integral of 5 uh, with respect to x, which is supposed to give us just 5x plus c. So this is actually supposed to give us 5x plus c if we follow this method. So but we are going to use that method of the rule we are discussing to see if this is going to give us exactly the same example. That's actually the reason we have the next two examples, 9 and 10. Okay, so let's look at that. All right, so of course the numerator, the denominator gives you a derivative that will be equal to the numerator. And of course, if we check that, that's equal to, it satisfies the condition. So we'll have the natural log of the denominator plus C. However, we know that the lean function, when it acts on the exponential function, it will cancel it out. And so uh, the lean here will take away the exponential function here, and that will leave us with only 5x plus c, which is exactly the same thing we have here. And so the next example is similar to the previous one. You can as well cancel this and this. But when you do, you are going to get the integral of cos x dx, which is actually equal to sine x. So let's see if we are going to get sine x in this example. First of all, note that the derivative of this denominator is actually the same thing as the numerator. How? Of course, you know that this is function of function, so you are going to call it u. Of course, the sine x becomes your u, and when you differentiate it, you are going to get uh, that du dx is equal to cos x. And so you remember the derivative of a prayer function of function, so you are going to have dy du multiplied by du dx. And so our dy du is going to give you exponential u multiplied by du dx, which is cos x. And so when you bring everything together, you will get this. And so let's see, if you then apply the rule, immediately you will get the natural log of your denominator. However, like what I said here, the natural log will take away exponential. And so you are going to have only sine x plus c. So that satisfies that this particular approach is a very beautiful method of solving integrals that satisfy that condition. So the first thing I advise you do whenever you have a fraction in your integral is check if the derivative of the denominator will give you the numerator. If that happens, apply this rule and you will get your solution. And this is where we'll end it for this video. Please kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, share our YouTube videos, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye.